السلام عليكم Good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. I would like to uh, thank the organizer of uh, such a valuable gathering. Um, we participated last year, but uh, this year, and inshallah, we will share all our uh, experience, knowledge, and things we do in the National Genetic Center with you. Actually, the National Genetic Center is one of the specialized tertiary care centers that belong to the Royal Hospital, which belong to the Ministry of Health. And uh, we provide our services in genetic health in three sections. Section one, specialized genetic clinics. And the section two is the laboratory. Section three is concerned mainly in education. Genetic education for medical professionals and education of the community. Now, we established a new curriculum for training genetic counselors to, they are representing all the regions and the government in Oman. From our deep beliefs that genetic counseling as a practice is quite mandatory in facilitating the genetic health services. Now we can see there is a poor communication in this particular aspect because of the terminology, because of the really highly developing advances in genetic technologies and the recipient of the services. So genetic counseling is quite a mandatory step and quite a newly developing profession globally. Right, the term of genetic counseling actually was initially uh, brought by Professor Shilber in 1947. We knew that during training of medical students, medical students who would become a future doctor, they were trained on how to communicate with the patients, with their families, and that communication is part of counseling. The counseling has to have the special skills, but in genetics aspect and in genetic health, it is totally different. So, as a name and as a practice, it was introduced in 1947 by Professor Sheldon, but in, 19, in 2006, the National Society of Genetic Counselors brought new uh, definition and a new pillars of genetic counseling that I'm going to through before I move to the project we started at the International Genetic Center. Now, as a definition, genetic counseling actually is defined as the process by which, um, or the procedure, applied to help the families, the, 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 uh, the, the patients, their relatives, to adapt with the genetic condition they are suffering from, and how to they can accommodate all the facilities available, either from their side or from the government side, in order to minimize the negative effects of such disorders. Genetic counseling includes interpretation of family and medical history in details, and that's quite very much vital in promoting the service and to reach in a good and efficient counseling. It also includes education about the inheritance, pattern or mood, the testing available, and all management for preventing having more babies or children with the same, uh, same disorder. It also includes counseling to promote informed choices for other uh, um, decisions or other uh, open choices for the, for, the, for the couple to have a normal baby, those who are really diagnosed with certain genetic disorders. The overall or the ultimate goal actually, as I said earlier, is to prevent or at least ameliorate or minimize the negative effect of such birth effects of family on the individual and the family uh, that taken care of. The person who provided this service is called counselor and the person who seeks the service and looking for it is called consultant. In a more detailed definition, the genetic counselor are those health professionals that are well trained with a specialized education curriculums and through different uh, experience in the medical field, medical genetics, and also laboratory uh, science in order to make a good and efficient and quite productive counseling the service they are supposed to prevent. Right, the goals of the counseling actually, we try in uh, genetic health we try to promote the term client instead of patient. We believe the term client is quite uh, more appropriate. I mean, the client is having more rights and having all the rights to receive 
and efficient services in or in all aspects, either in preventive aspects, therapeutic aspects, and also rehabilitation aspects. So I'm trying to use the work of clients in all the lectures uh, during the curriculum of the Judith Counseling uh, Training Course. So we help the client to explore the problem, and also we help them to understand the, 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 the cause of that problem they are suffering from. We believe that it will really help in, um, in any future planning we, are, we, we want to implement in order to minimize the negative outcome of such pathology. Mostly we involve the patients in the decision. We do not um, uh, try to, um, for example, control his decision or her decision or the family decision, but we try to help as much as we can and in a way that it is totally belong to them to decide what will happen in their future. Um, also, uh, the overall aim of counseling is to provide a chance for the client to look for other choices also. And we try to uh, correlate our uh, efforts with different aspects and different uh, uh, institutes in the country and even outside the country. So it's a whole care program we try to provide uh, our patients and relatives. Now, there are certain skills for every counselor should have. But for genetic counseling, a genetic counselor should be very much committed to the mission. He should be very much self-aware, a good listener. That's a very much important point. I always say that a good listening is number one in reaching um, an outcome of uh, really advantageous um, uh, services. We need to listen a lot before we interpret or before we guide our discussion with our clients. Uh, of course, he has to be consistent, he has to be accepting, uh, caring, and he should be or should be trustful, and, and above all, respecting all the beliefs, because we are seeing patients from different uh, background of um, uh, beliefs, so we should have that kind of respectful um, attitude. Um, of course, to give an efficient genetic counseling, you need to have a definite diagnosis. And why is that? Because you are giving a counselor, you are giving an advice in which um, the couple or the family is going to build the decision of their future. So the diagnosis has to be very much confirmed and uh, you should be confident as a physician, as a counselor, confident about the diagnosis you just gave. And we train our students also to um, explain the risk assessment. There are certain formulas we are using in this field, in the genetic counseling field. So risk assessment has to be uh, calculated in figures, in numbers, and given to the um, consultant who ask for the advice. Of course, the communication, and that's a different uh, aspect of counseling. The communication, we try to uh, teach our students in the, in, in the general counseling training job or training course to have a very uh, efficient, more productive communication skills. Um, usually, the question is, what's next? And what is next? You are supposed to give all the choices available and also explain each of them and how they're going to help, what are the advantages, disadvantages, success rate, failure rate, everything has to be explained without showing any favorite choices to your patients. That's it. But whenever there is a question, you need to answer that question in details and also in all uh, the knowledge which is updated to you. There are certain tests in the genetic counseling uh, field of work. A diagnostic test, which we know, that a, diagno a test that made to give a diagnosis. A predictive testing, in which we, uh, um, we, we request or we do a test for pre-symptomatic. There are certain genetic disorders in which the features will appear in the future, like in the mid-30s or mid-40s, in, in certain families and in certain, in certain diseases. So pre-symptomatic testing also um, is provided. Um, so we, we, we try to introduce something called pre-test counseling before offering the test in this particular uh, families. Of course, career testing for recessive disorders. are recessive disorders in which the, both parents have to have the gene and 25% uh, uh, of their kids will have the disorder. So any diagnosed case of a recessive disorder in families, we offer a career testing for the rest of the families, particularly in the pre marital aspect. Of course, prenatal testing uh, now developing really fast. We used to have amniocentesis testing, serious testing. Now, there is a method also to 
uh, extract fetal DNA from the maternal serum and try to analyze the DNA of the baby uh, for certain mutations or even for all sequences and give um, results before the prenatal. Now, because of all this, we believe that we need to have a genetic counselor to close the circle between a, a geneticist and a, 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 a receiving or a receiving of that services in all uh, governments in the country. So the idea and the need of developing an on-job training course for genetic counselors um, came particularly for this reason. A curriculum has been made and this curriculum uh, revised by the European Society of Genetic Counseling and uh, all the points and uh, the advices they gave we included in the curriculum. Uh, this curriculum has been shown also to uh, different institutes in the neighboring country and we got uh, positive feedback, uh, some advices before we start and all what they say we included uh, in the curriculum. It's the first academic and professional course in the region. Um, we have the privilege of uh, launching such uh, educational program. It's an on-job training program. We started uh, with the first batch that got graduate at the end of uh, coming February. And um, some of them are doctors, some of them are highly qualified nurses uh, from every government in the country. So they, they were exposed to clinical rotation. They were exposed to the, uh, theoretical uh, lecture.